Hi everyone, Shane Armand Rowe here. If you're a new owner of the Steam Deck handheld gaming system, you probably have a lot of questions and may even be a bit overwhelmed. In this video, I'm going to tell you 10 things you need to know as a new Steam Deck owner. Stick around. Dolphin is the life's blood of the Steam Deck. Dolphin is the file manager pre-installed on the Steam Deck, and almost everything you do outside of playing games will require it. From installing non-Steam games to cleaning them up when you're done, and of course, emulation file management will likely be in your future as well. Every tutorial I offer on this channel usually needs Dolphin. For those well-versed in Windows, you will find many things about Linux to be unusual and seemingly overcomplicated, and Dolphin is no exception. It really isn't pre-configured for the deck user, so your next stop should be checking out my Dolphin Tricks and Tips video, which will help you make the file manager more useful to Steam Deck evolutions. Third-party launchers are a game of cat and mouse. Thanks to third-party publishers like Blizzard, Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, and Epic Games, amongst others, playing these games on the Steam Deck can be, well, a nightmare. Some of those games are available on Steam, but new users of Steam Deck will realize that just because you bought it on Steam doesn't mean it's a Steam game, just a third-party locker launched by Steam. At any time, these launchers can break, rendering all of your EA games not working. Blizzard can make a simple change and lock out the deck from playing Overwatch 2 and World of Warcraft. Ubisoft's launcher can have issues playing in offline mode. This channel has many videos showing you how to get these launchers working, but they are not our friends, and avoiding games that use them is going to make your life as a deck owner a lot happier. Your internal storage will fill up regardless of where you install games. If you thought you could buy a 64 gigabyte Steam Deck and just throw a giant micro SD card in it to make up the difference, well, unfortunately, you were a victim. Don't worry, you're in good company. The 46 gigabyte free out of the box internal storage space will slowly be eaten up as you install games, even if you install the games on the micro SD card or external drive. Unless you did your research, and who does, you probably didn't know about things like shader caches, transcoded videos, and many other things that automatically populate on the internal storage. I have a really good video that will explain what shader caches are and why you should not attempt to move them to another storage medium. If you were a Nintendo Wii owner back in the day, you probably remember having to do what was known as refrigerator memory management, where you were constantly shuffling stuff around due to storage restrictions. If you have a 64 gigabyte SKU, I would strongly recommend checking out my videos on storage management and even more strongly consider upgrading your internal drive to at least 256 gigabytes, even more if you can afford it. Not all SD cards are created equal and why that matters. Ah uh, yes, the micro SD card, the promised savior of your 64 gigabyte Steam Deck and the Nakatomi hostages. Everyone is looking for the biggest card with the cheapest price, but this probably isn't the strategy you should be going for. Stick with name brand cards like Samsung or SanDisk. Pretty much any of those, regardless of size or class, will likely load your games fast enough for you. But the biggest kept secret revolves around the downloading of games to a micro SD card. This is where you get what you pay for. Take a look at this chart showing the differences in download speeds for a simple 10 gigabyte game, Alan Wake. Downloading locally or to a quality SanDisk Extreme card takes about three and a half minutes. On the venerable SanDisk Ultra card, 18 and a half minutes. Wow, maybe your time isn't worth anything, but six times slower download speeds is a deal breaker for me. Imagine downloading a big game over 100 gigabytes like Red Dead Redemption 2. Do you want that in 40 minutes or four hours? Do yourself a huge favor and spend a little extra to get a fast writing card. The time you save will be worth it, at least it was to me. Understanding Proton is the best way to prepare for life as a Steam Deck owner. You've likely heard the term Proton, but may be confused by what it is and how it works. Proton is what allows us to play Windows games on a Linux-based Steam OS-driven device. Proton, though, is a double-edged sword. While it provides a great translation layer for playing Windows games, it also requires a new way of thinking for we the Windows loyal. In my Proton 101 video, I will explain to you exactly what it is and how it works. This will give you a huge leg up in non-traditional uses of the Steam Deck, like modding, playing non-Steam games, getting third-party launchers to work, and so much more. I totally recommend a viewing. 
Nothing can prepare you for your journey on Steam Deck more than learning all about Proton and its derivatives like GE Proton. I realize there is a lot to learn here, but in the end, it will make your life a lot easier. Modding games is not easy on the Steam Deck. If you're used to easy modding of games using things like Vortex or other turnkey modding tools in Windows, get ready for a surprise. The very root methodology of how Steam Deck organizes games, uses Proton compatibility folders, and much more will cause you a lot of anguish in the coming weeks. Steam Workshop mods are fine, as are direct file replacement type mods, but if you're hoping you can just run a mod tool from Windows here, prepare to roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty. Yes, the Steam Deck is a PC, but it is a Linux-based Steam OS PC, and in some respects, 180 degrees off from what you're probably used to using. If you're a heavy modder, you may see Windows working its way onto your deck in the near future. Emulation is amazing, but keep your expectations in check. Steam Deck is often praised as an amazing emulation machine, and it most certainly is. But if you're looking for a replacement for a Nintendo Switch or portable PS3, Xbox 360 emulation, I'm hoping you didn't sell the ones you already had, figuring the Steam Deck could do it all. Solid, reliable emulation of up to 5th generation game consoles, like PlayStation 1, Nintendo 64, Jaguar, Amiga CD32, can be found on the deck, as well as handhelds up to and including the Sony PlayStation Portable. Of course, all classic computers are well represented, but running old PC games deserves a video of its own, and it's often easier to find a console port of the old PC game, rather than struggling to get it running natively. Once you hit the sixth generation of consoles like Dreamcast, GameCube, PS2, Xbox, you'll start to find emulation hits and misses. Most of these platforms can be hand tweaked and finessed into running most stuff, but emulation prowess on the deck slows down here. Once you reach PS3 and Switch territories, emulation is really down to a case by case and game by game basis. One man's playable is another man's unacceptable. If you're planning on running that generation of games, you better hit YouTube and see how the games you care about stand up. Windows kernel anti-cheat systems aren't going away, and here's what you cannot play without using Windows. A lot of newbies are hedging their bets that eventually games that are unplayable now may someday be playable on the deck without installing Windows. Some games originally unplayable on decks, such as the popular Dead by Daylight and Halo Master Chief Collection, indeed became playable. Unfortunately, while Valve has given developers the means to adapt their anti-cheat to deck, most don't seem to be too interested in doing so. Along with that, there are anti-cheat systems that tie themselves directly to the low-level Windows kernel, like Ricochet, which is protecting Modern Warfare and Warzone from being played on the deck. And these just aren't going to be made to work on SteamOS. Your only choice to play games like Fortnite or Destiny 2 will require Windows on deck. Speaking of which... Use a Windows to go boot SD card if you need to run Windows from time to time. All right, so you're starting to think you may need a little Windows action in your Steam Deck life. Some of you play free-to-play games with anti-cheats and others just want to bring some sort of order to the device so you can mod, hack, and otherwise exploit the operating system as you have been for decades with Windows. Sometimes you just need a little Windows. That doesn't mean you have to toss away the amazing Steam OS and all the riches it offers to play one or two games. You can use a micro SD card to install something called Windows To Go, a more streamlined version of Windows designated to be run from removable media like an SD card. This doesn't require replacing your Steam Deck's OS or even setting up some elaborate dual boot system, which many people have found troubling. This Windows To Go card simply pops into your deck and you do a simple power-up selection of the card to boot from. Boom, you're in Windows with all your familiar tools, anti-cheat games, and bloated execution we've all grown to know and sort of love. Unless you're a Linux guru, and even if you are, chances are you're going to need some help along the way. The Steam Deck doesn't have Windows installed by default, and while there are ways of replacing, augmenting, or dual booting Windows on the deck, it isn't necessarily for the faint of heart. Unfortunately for some, a Linux-based SteamOS system is going to require a serious shift in knowledge and a large amount of adaptation for some. Even if you are comfortable with Linux, DEC brings a few new things to the table, like an immutable file system and a few more surprises. Unfortunately for us, there's a huge support community ready and willing to help. YouTube here is a great resource, and I offer many newbie tutorials not found elsewhere, for visual learners, and Reddit has several subs including r slash Steam Deck, which are filled with talented and patient people ready to help. 
but do search and try to help yourself. We see the same questions posted daily, and there are already great answers out there. I have a newbie course of my YouTube videos that help orient the newbies, and you will learn a considerable amount by watching them before asking questions on Reddit. I hope you enjoyed this 10 things video. If you liked this content, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, hit that bell. Thanks so much for watching. You are appreciated. Until next time, take care.